your 2023 NBA G League champs, the Delaware Blue Coats. Welcome in everybody to another episode of the Blues Coats be powered by Heat Ratio Sports. I'm your host, Tony Consolo, joined by my co-host, the man, Mr. Joe Richmond. And- What's up? What's up? Coach is always busy. Just got back from Portugal, doing some big things right here for the Delaware Blue Coats. And speaking of coach, who better to speak to after another great season? On the line, we have Ryan Ayers, assistant coach of the Blue Coats. And before he even speaks, man, we got to read the resume a little bit because people might not know this about him. But not only is he our assistant coach, but but most recently served as the assistant coach of the U.S. Virgin Islands men's national team. Damn, is that a tongue twister? Prior, he was an assistant coach for Division One ND Notre Dame. And so let's talk some real facts because this is interesting. He was ranked third in Notre Dame history for three pointers made, and eighth in history for three point percentage. That's a I, I can't wait to get into that. And during his five year stint, he played in Finland and France, and also played in when it was the development league for Fort Wayne and Austin. And his coaching career started at Germantown Academy. Academy and assistant coach for Bucknell University. Coach Ayers, thanks so much for joining us. Hey guys, thank you for having me. I really appreciate the, the rundown. You don't realize that you have all that stuff on, on your resume, but I really appreciate it. Tony and Joe, you guys are the best, man. Thank you. Uh, we try. We try. Right, coach? We, we try to do our best. Oh man, you know what we do and it's so good to have <laughs> you. Coach! I know sometimes yes, you do your resume, you be like, hold on, is he reading my resume? That's somebody else. Exactly. You know, there's so much, you be done forgot about it. Exactly. I've been coaching for a few years, so it's just crazy to go back and, and hear those things, but uh, I'm shocked they barely got off the bench, but I appreciate you guys. <laughs> See, he's already humble, man. He's too humble. <laughs> man. We, we got to loosen him up a little bit, but uh, nah, yeah, yeah. In, all, in all seriousness, we thank so much, man. Having this is truly an honor for both of us to have somebody that's inside the program, and speaking of that, I mean, look, we won the G League trophy last year. Uh, came up a little short in 2024. A lot of different changes that happened this year. How would you summarize this season overall? I would summarize this season as team and an organization that was resilient throughout all the changes that happened. We were throwing a lot of different variables throughout the year, and I thought the staff from business down to our coaching staff, our operations staff, and then our players were just going throughout it with the same attitude of trying to win a championship. I thought it was a success dealing with the things that we had. It was a pleasure to come to work every day. We won. We went to the playoffs for four or five consecutive years, representing the Sixers and the Blue Coats so well, and I thought we got better. I thought we were able to just to adapt to our surroundings and, and really have a productive season. We were short of our championship aspirations, but it was still something that we could hang our hats on and be proud of, I feel. I'll tell you what, I know Coach agrees. I know I agree. Coach, you probably feel the same way, right? Yeah, I mean, Coach just put it the right way. I mean, but you know what? It's a testament to the culture that we have there that we've been able to go all those years, going from the pandemic to where we are now. Yes, we fell a little short, but if you looked at all the moving parts, I'm about a, maybe 100 points in player productivity going yeah, to the yeah. NBA. It's hard. You know, Jameer and those guys, they did an amazing job replacing good guys, the guys that fit the culture of the, who we are as the Delaware Blue Coats. And I'd said, based on last year to this year, I've, Coach, I, I'll defer to you. I think it was more teaching than coaching this year. I thought it was a lot of teaching being done. And I think that's what made us be so successful, that along with the coaching, there was so much teaching added and a lot of patience from the staff. I believe it allowed those guys to grow and gel as a unit because it was so many moving parts. And I believe that is why we still had a championship caliber team on a court every night and we just fell a little short in the process yeah I, I couldn't agree with you more we did do a lot of new teachings this year with a new philosophy obviously you want to trickle some of the things down from the Sixers and what coach Nurse is doing into our philosophy down here and I thought our guys did a good job of really adapting to that something new something different but um I will give our guys credit the players that they never gave up they played hard till the end they I think they represented the blue coats as best as they could there's some production that we lost throughout the year and some injuries and some things you just can't control just due to other factors. And I thought we just stayed the course, stuck to our principles of what we were trying to do all year and, and put ourselves in a good position to compete for a championship. You know, obviously you won a few plays back here and there in that main Celtics game just to change the course of our season. But a lot to learn from, but a lot to be thankful for as well this year. Hey, Tony, it was short. Sometimes I saw a coach in practice get about 20 and 10 one time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was definitely a challenge when you have my old behind out there playing with the guys when you don't have enough people in practice, there's how sometimes the G rolls where you're having only seven, eight guys, but you want to get some live reps going in. So 
they'll throw out the assistance and, and things like that, which, you know, you're eager to do a little bit, but it definitely probably not going to be the same caliber of level as having a real professional out there in their prime. You spoke about resilience and yeah. great segue to a couple of these questions because the G League is very unique in that standpoint, where there's tons of moving parts. It's consistently evolving. And there were a lot of two-way players this year, a roster moving three. I mean, we can name them. Guys like Kenny Lofton aren't here. Darius Baisley, you know, so many different guys aren't here. And look, Ricky Council, we talked about him. He goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like, how does that impact the flow of the team on a daily basis? Uh, how do you keep the mental stability in yourself and the team to go through all these changes? That's the unique thing about the Gs that you expect that throughout the year but it doesn't really hit until it happens to you throughout the year and I think our biggest thing with coach Long and was we still have to show up to work every day you still have to perform it's kind of the next man up mentality guys who were here all year and consistent they now have opportunities if the two ways are with the Sixers or if we have injured players they have other opportunities to just do well and I, we had all the players that were capable I think to Jameer and Prosper did a good job of establishing some guys who are grounded and know how to be a professional and know how to show up to work that was big with longer but just be a professional every day because it is a challenge it can i wouldn't say mess up with the team but just far as it can impact to use your word how a team approaches each game you want consistency and it's just hard to have that for a few weeks in a row you know you might get two weeks of it and then it changes and it's just kind of how do you navigate that but having good people around having good support systems around i thought was beneficial to us to just at least stay the course and get some good wins here i like that answer coach i mean i know you've been around you're there every day coach airs i think he touched on when he said the collective as far as the business side and things of that nature and when you have what we have going on through the season with the ups and downs of players going up and down and so much transition our responsibility to the team was really getting the people into the building we needed a real six man and our fans was that six man our energy in those stands had to match the energy on the floor and sometimes lift that energy up when those platoons presented themselves I think is because of the collective that we are as Delaware Blue Coach being that part of the staff and Coach Longo and like you said, Prosper, Jameer, make us all one. I think that's what attributed to a lot of our being consistent, a lot of us never having our heads down, and it just helped propel us to where we, we ended up being at. We just fell short. And I can, I'm going to keep saying we fell short because, man, it still hurts. I've been here since day one, so it is different. So, But we got so much more work to do, and I'm excited about that work that's ahead of us. It's exciting. Now, confidence, obviously, is a huge point of emphasis on any player's development and growth. I, I don't think Turk needs confidence because I, I watch him. He'll throw up 20. <laughs> threes no matter what right no matter what <laughs> He's no matter what confident right but um are there any techniques or coaching styles that you know you yourself have either learned you know, possibly from your father or you know some of the guys you've been around as well to kind of keep them focused i mean for the most part they're young kids you know yeah. they want to have fun they have high energy they have a lot of things on their mind and you know how do you keep them focused on the game so much That's a really good question we do it as a collective group as a staff at least because what i think i'm learning each person has their own personality and you can't reach everybody not everybody's going to relate to me. I might not be able to reach them to my best of my abilities. And it's just understanding that. But the great thing about our guys is that everybody was pretty relatable. Everybody was respectful. Um, of course, you have close relationships with others and you, you might with one player than you do with the next. But it's just trying to relate to them on their own level. They want to know if you care about them as a person. They want to know if you care about their games. My biggest thing with, with them is just to, how can I be relatable? How can I be an asset to them? I care about them as people. I care about their ball production. I care about where they want to go. And it's just trying to develop those relationships organically. I was fortunate enough to play in the G, so it might be an event where you're relating to them from a comparable experience that you had. I will say this about Turk and Ricky and Jeff and Baze and, and Kenny and everybody who came through from the Sixers, they all wanted to have really positive attitudes about being there. They showed up wanting to work, wanting to better their situations, whatever it may be. And then like the ones that were there from day one, I'd say Jeff, Turk, and Ricky. Now when I see them, it's so organic. You have this bond that you've been through the last six months together that's really strong. You know, you just learn how to coach them when to push them, when to pull them aside and put your arm around them. So it's just developing those relationships. That only happens with time. It really does. It's hard to force that time and, and those relationships. So. It's a great point. We're talking to Coach Ryan Ayers here, assistant coach of the Delaware Blue Coats. WrestleMania was just here this week. Mm -hmm. Huge event. And yeah. the leader of WrestleMania, of WWE, now Triple H, has having such a bigger impact on the product because he was <laughs> in the game, right? He mm -hmm. was a wrestler. And, and Joe, I know you're shaking your head, so you know this as well. The One of the big 
biggest things he did was he preached family and he said, listen, you guys need to spend time with your family. Like, don't be missing things because it's your kid's birthday or come to me. Let us know what we need to do. He understands that. And Joe, when you have somebody that can relate to players and athletes like that, it brings out another side of them, doesn't it? Always. I always said that even when I toured with the Harlem Globetrotters, it was always tradition that a Globetrotter coaches a Globetrotter. Like Coach mm-hmm. Ayers, he played so he could relate. Coach Dam, you know, he's been around it. JP's been around it. I look at Coach Ryan and, you know, his dad is always at the game. So you always got that wisdom that you could turn around to, that you could lean on. And, and he had a voice there. You look at Coach Nurse hosting the G League. It is a true family atmosphere. And I want to add, that only happens when the head of the family, which is Coach Nurse and the, the Sixers, are understanding we're all one family. And the support that we've gotten from the Sixers, the support we've gotten from players coming to games, Coach Nurse being at games, it showed them that, yo, we're all invested here. We're all here. And when you see Ricky go up, and when you see Turk go up, you see Jeff, Bays, when you see our guys go up there and they come back and they share those moments that other guys mm-hmm. haven't been around, that just adds to the family. It's like a guy going away to the military, coming back home. You know, yeah. it's like a reunion again. And it brings new energy back to the house. And this is what creates that family atmosphere. I like it. And these guys have had so many outings. Coach Sham's daughter had a birthday party right there in the gymnasium while the game is going on. These mm-hmm. are the things that we create that I've said is not done anywhere else in the league. I've been around this for 11 years and we mm-hmm. just do so many things out the box. But Coach Orion has said it best when everybody buys in and we got a great group of guys, no ego guys, guys that that's a testament to who we are and how we go about things. And it's just been this season has been truly mind boggling of how we all came together and we all stuck together as a family. We just put a whole <laughs> WWE reference on this. You know that. It's all head of the table. We like, we yeah. all the way around, man. Let me ask you this, Coach, because you mentioned about the flow. And just to look at the Sixers right now, because again, people get a little crazy. I'm one of them. I get nuts a little <laughs> bit, right? I'm like in and out. Like, come on, I'm passing it, right? But, you know, you just got your big man back. You know, speak to the people to say, well, what's the problem? Why can't everything just mesh? When you make a big trade, you bring all guys in like Buddy Heald. How much does it take for a team to gel? Does it happen instantaneously or does it just take more time? I feel like it's hard for it to happen instantaneously because there's just so much that goes into this game with rotations and when you're playing and how you're playing at the time. I think having Joel back is a huge asset. I think obviously there's them a spirit, a life that we haven't seen, you know, they had those struggling two months and now what, and they're heading into the playoffs with a good spirit about it. And then they're figuring some things out because he can really change the game. I think they're going to continue to hit their stride once they get even used to playing with them. Other guys that didn't get that many reps with them when he was out. So I think with, with coach nurses preparation and those guys continually to, to connect on the court, whoever would they play in the first round? I hope they're prepared for the Sixers for sure. And nobody, Hey Joe, no, nobody wants to see that. I mean, you know what people forget too is coach nurses wanted every level. Like, yep. like band-aid teams together. That's a rock <laughs> team. Like, there was a lot of band-aids on that team, man. Like, sure. people forget about that. The last thing I was going to ask before I let Coach Joe get in here, and I'm sure he's going to give you your flowers because I, I love how he does that. We try to, on the Blue Coats, be here. You know, we try to talk about positive messaging and, and empowerment. Obviously, your journey, even at a young age, covers a vast amount of experiences. I mean, we read it. You read everywhere you've been and what you've been up to. Thinking about your journey, can you speak to, like, any obstacles, made you think, wow, maybe this life isn't for me. Like, you had a struggle to get above. Uh, luckily, you know, you had the lineage with Randy, your father, and right. knowing some of the things, but was there ever a point in time you thought, maybe it's not for me? Yeah, I think we all have moments like that. Coaching college for a while, and I, and I stepped away for a little bit. That year and a half, it was really a, a time for self-reflection, and it's just something I want to do, but it also just rebirthed my love for coaching, my love for basketball, and my pursuit into doing that, and that's I've, I've been very fortunate to get back into it especially at this level at the professional level which i think is is the best in the world but yeah of course you have doubts you have moments where you're like man this might not work out for me is this something i want to do do i need to go look for a different type of job things like that and i just think the man above works in different ways and i just you got to keep putting yourself out there and keep believing in yourself and confident and it's hard to do because there are days where you're, you're not going to feel your best but you got to do it anyway lucky enough i got i was able to, to to join this special family with the blue coats and sixers and be welcomed by coach joe and his staff and everything i mean it's just something that i couldn't even imagine for my first stint as a professional at this level and, and to do it in philadelphia i mean the best sports fans and that we got that i grew up around and watching Iverson and McKee and Matumbo and all those guys. Just very, very thankful for that. 
definitely. Hey, Joe, now we're getting excited. You hear those names? Yeah, I was going to say, we can, we can hey. take it back if you want. Yeah. Hey, good, good days. Hey, I, don't, I don't know if he need to change a job, but if he want another profession, coach can go be the poker because he coaches always like this, smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. We can be up 20, we can be down 20. Coach don't change. Coach can be one of those professional poker players, boy. I'll tell you, one thing I looked at, I was laughing at because the one thing that me and coach have in common that he might not know is that he was in Philly and so was I. I, I, I coached and played up in Philly and Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, because I was in Sweden at the time, and we went up to Bowdoin, third division team, and they asked me to go coach them. And they never beat Bowdoin 25 years. I went up there and beat them. They cut me off the court. Oh, my. (laughs) I didn't know that. That's pretty cool, man. Wow. We breaking news here on the Blue Coast. (laughs) Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Hey, I tell everybody, I've been around this thing a long time, man. I'm from you, Germantown. You know the relationship you and I have. And how does it really feel to turn and look back sometimes and see your dad? at that game, man. How does that really feel? It feels pretty special if you think about it just with his history and the coaching and especially in this organization. I mean, my family moved here because of the Sixers and things like that. We've established roots in Philadelphia and for him to be at our games and be a part of this organization, we consider home now. I feel a little bit of very prideful for our family and our name and things like that. So uh, yeah, I do love having him around. I think he he probably loves it more than I do. You know, he's like our outside consultant. It's been pretty cool to have my mom and my dad at games like that. Yeah, I love when I see my mom is always yeah. Just more laid back and even though she did sometimes she'll come and tap me on the shoulder I want you to speak the one more thing before I give it back to Tony man is that you come to that facility you played in the G you know what some teams don't have the resources that we have and what does it mean when you walk into that field house and that ball tips up and you see those fans and you see that energy yeah especially for someone who has come from the D or G League experience where you, we didn't have any of that like wow this game has really grown the investment into it this is how it's supposed to be done. And I think the Blue Coats are a testament to that because they try to do it the right way with their family atmosphere. So you just feel a part of it. I think that's one of the biggest things about being a part of coaching athletics is you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself. And so I think the Blue Coats do a great job of creating that type of environment. Of course, it makes you want to work a little harder, prepare a little better just because of the lineage that, that you all have created over the years. You know, me, my first year here walking into a championship type of organization at this level, it's like, you know, wow, there, there's a lot here. And yeah, I think it only made me a better coach. I know that. And I'm looking forward to carrying that in the future. You know, I got to have a little fun here. Last thing before we go, because you dialed back some names and you mentioned some things. Now, just off the cuff here, and and I'm not going to hold nothing against you. It doesn't have to be Philly bias or anything like that. But we all had that, you know, that little basketball hoop in our house and in our basement. We used to shoot Nerf balls on and this and that. We used to try to emulate one of our guys. Come on, man. Who's jump shot? Were you emulating growing up? Man, that is a good one. I won't hold it against you if it's not Philly. You know what I mean? It's all good. No, no. <laughs> well, I got. we could talk about my favorite Sixers over the years. We can definitely do that. But in high school, I tried to be like Rip Hamilton. Nice. Okay, so Coachville, Southeast PA guy. That was, you know, along the times where he was in Detroit and, you know, doing the things with Chauncey and those guys won a championship and he was coming off of screens like that. That's kind of how I saw myself playing and who else a little little bit for the Sixers I really like Jason Capono was one of the better shooters on that 2009 2010 team I down Iverson obviously that that's a staple I mean Aaron McKee Raja Bell there's a throwback for you Raja I had a little you know jump shot crush on Hersey Hawkins back in the day man like okay that's a good I was trying to emulate a little Hawk back back in the day man you you are taking it back wow that's yeah man oh Ron Anderson wow yeah you gotta go back to those right you gotta go back knows right Joe knows hey I'm gonna give you Oh, here I, we go. I, I got I got tapes. I got receipts. <laughs> and I don't know Rod Anderson. Oh, <laughs> oh my oh. God. Yeah, I got to see that. Yeah, we see need that. that. We need that. Yo, point, a, yo, you ever see L Train? It was against L Train and Rod Anderson was on the same team with Bobby Johnson and Sal. Oh, and I intercepted a pass. And, don't, and we went to half court and Rod Anderson bust my mouth wide open with an elbow. <laughs> wow. Right in the bake, right in the Baker League, and me and Rob been cool ever since. Right in the Baker League, and that's where that's where it all happened. But Ron Anderson, one of the best players, man. I loved him when he played with us, and he held the goal against Jordan. But Rob, really a guy for us, and I love that squad. I love that squad. Yeah, man, that's that's pretty cool. Definitely need that footage. As Kenny Payne, I was on the same team with Kenny Payne, Ben Hoffman Sports. We all played on the same. Me, Kenny Payne, Big Mike. We all was on the same team. Kenny Payne from Louisville. Yes, man, Kenny like this. Then we got the bar. Shop basketball talk going. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good story. You go on all day, man. 
yeah, we yeah. go all day. But listen, I just want to say, I know your schedule was crazy today. You're helping out on both fronts, right? You're helping out with the sure. Sixers. Yeah. I just appreciate you on behalf of myself, Coach Joe, obviously the Blue Coats organization, Heat Ratio Sports, everybody involved to make this happen, man. Thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for being patient with me on the scheduling and, and, and making this happen. You guys, this was great. I really, really enjoyed it. And I'll happy to come back anytime you need me. Be careful, right, Joe? When, you, when people say they come back whenever you need, right? We're going to hold that to that. Coach, honestly, thank you. It's been an amazing year, a great season. Going to run it back. And I pray that you're still with us because I know there's other opportunities. There's a bright, a bright future ahead for you. And that's what we want in the G, right? right. We always say that. We, yeah, we want our guys, but the, the, once they, we want them to go too. And we understand that. And that comes with business that we in and we know it works for our coaches as well and if you do god bless but you know hopefully you'll be back and we go do some great things this summer and get ready for another crazy season and go back chip chasing that's Thank right man. I, would, I would love that love that we owe you guys one we do chip chip chip. Chip. i like, like that. that on that <laughs> note we're gonna run it back absolutely next year as always everybody thanks so much for tuning in we'll catch you next time right here on the Blue Coast.